Hi everyone, my name is Tiago Costa and I'll be your speaker here for today's webinar. There we're going to talk a little bit about Azure Serverless and how cool Azure Serverless is. But first of all, some housekeeping, let's just talk a little bit about Wintelect core services. So basically Wintelect does consulting where they basically can provide services like custom software application development and architecture. Also, uh, instructor-led training. So Microsoft number one training vendor for over 15 years, and basically I've already trained more than 50,000 Microsoft uh, developers. And also, if you have more specific needs on training, on-demand training also, so world-class subscription-based online training, uh, both of them can be online or it can also be um, instructor-led training on, on site. Um, as you can see by all the, the, the logos, very known names like Xamarin and Microsoft, um, and Microsoft, okay? For you to know a little bit better uh, who is the persons, uh, the employees of uh, Wintelect, so um, they already wrote, okay, over uh, 30 different books, um, and mainly with, uh, with Microsoft Press. And as you can see, this is uh, something that it's not easy, okay, to achieve, to be totally honest with you. Uh, writing a single book is, is a life achievement, in my opinion. Um, so this, I think, tells a lot about the, all the staff uh, that Wintelect has. Also, a special offer for all the attendees in this webinar. So you get 10% discount on any public virtual mock courses. So you can go to wintelect.com forward slash mock and you can see some of the mock courses over there. Um, you also get 10% discount on Microsoft Certification World Training um, and also uh, other, other certifications. You get also the $99 transition certification exam vouchers. Uh, this is just about to expire. Okay, because the transition uh, exams are going to be gone uh, around June, so run for them if you if you can take one of those, because then you need to do more exams and uh, the exams are a little bit more expensive. Uh, for all the details, and if you really want to discuss this a little bit further, contact Marta. You have uh, her email over there. Um, she will be happy to respond to all your queries. Talking a little bit about myself. Uh, so like I said before, so my name is Tiago Costa. I work as a cloud architect and advisor, which uh, it's a freaking nice role to be honest. I, I, I'm, I'm very lucky to do this. Um, and I'm, I'm working for now, like for, this is my last thing that I do today. I'm in Europe, by the way, I'm not in the US, so this is why. And I started at 5 a.m. in the morning today to deliver a webinar like this. Um, and, and then I just did some architecture for some company and I deliver a training and I'm delivering a webinar. So I really love what I do or else I would not able, okay, to do all of this in a single day. Um, basically, uh, as a cloud architect, I design applications for, uh, for my customers that usually they can be applications that can be brand new to the cloud, which is, to be totally honest, my favorite uh, thing where I don't have legacy dependencies, nothing like that. It's, it's, it's super awesome when we can do such a thing. Well, but sometimes we need to migrate existing applications, okay? And when we do so, of course, all those dependencies are there that make our life harder, but in the end, we need to achieve the best solution for the customer. And also, uh, when I'm a, as an advisor, so the role is like to work as like a futurist, um, and I need to understand a little bit the trends on the market. Uh, and for example, one of the trends that I really believed in the beginning that was just not a marketing uh, flop, it was really something was serverless. Um, and for example, I already have customers working with this uh, quite for a few time, they are already um, designing and deploying everything that they can as serverless instead of IaaS or PaaS, um, and they are getting uh, all the, 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 the good benefits. 
Um, of course, there, there is still some catches that, let's be honest here, that Microsoft needs to do, to do in, in, in some of the, um, so in, in, in some of the services, um, but yeah, they, they will get there, okay? Um, basically, I'm also a trainer um, and I basically deliver, also I'm one of the persons that deliver training on Azure. Um, and I'm also the author of some of the Microsoft official courseware and also speaker in some, uh, in some events, like for example, Microsoft Ignite. I work as an independent contractor and I'm also a MVP for Microsoft Azure. Uh, I'm an MCT, which is a Microsoft certified trainer, um, and I'm MCT regional lead. And I mostly teach Azure today. To be totally honest, it's really rare uh, for me to teaching uh, other things because Azure keeps me so, so busy that uh, I don't have that much time, okay, to teach uh, classes that I used to teach in the past. Uh, but today I'm just focusing on, uh, on Azure. And I already work with Azure uh, for almost seven, for seven, more than seven years now. So I'm one of the persons that started to work with Azure back in days and everyone was like, what the hell is Azure is? I, no one knew what Azure was. I felt like the, the basically the, the, the strangest people, uh, person there in the office, okay? Because I was working with some of, something that no one understand what it was. And today, well, I think today everyone uh, know what cloud is. They might not work with, but I think everyone knows. You have all my contacts here, so my email, if you want to get directly to me, questions, um, uh, if you need something, just 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 ping me. Um, also my website where you can basically check some of, some of my articles about Azure. I mainly only write about cloud over there, Azure and Office 365 a little bit too. Um, and also my Twitter handler. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, I, again, basically um, I, I tweet, okay, stuff about, uh, about Azure. So the agenda for, for today, um, we're going to do an introduction to what serverless is, okay? Then we're going to talk a little bit about Azure functions, uh, we're going to talk a little bit also about event grid and logic apps. So there are the th three big, um, uh, basically topics for today. Uh, th there are more topics about serverless on Azure, for sure. Okay, hey, look, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, for sure there is. And we can build a full course uh, only, okay, with um, only with serverless, like a week course or something like that but we only have one hour here on the webinar, so I needed to make some executive decisions of explaining basically the core parts, which is for me the most important for someone that is uh, getting into, um, into Azure serverless. So let's talk about serverless. And I love, I love this, which is less servers, more code. So of course, look, when, when, when we're doing this and when we're, when we're using uh, Azure functions and when I'm doing logic apps, uh, event grid, we always say hey, it's serverless. Well, uh, of course, everyone knows in the back somewhere there is a server. But the good part of this is that we're not saying that there are no servers. What I'm saying is that I don't need to manage them. I don't need to worry about them. Someone else will have that job. Someone else's job is just doing that. So probably they are way better than I am doing that because they just do that. They are specialized on that. And of course, because they have several customers running stuff in the same hardware, what happens is that they can sell this to me the executions pretty cheap because look, I'm not doing anything now. I'm not paying. I can just tell you just a very short example. Uh, so I lead some communities in my country, um, some Azure communities, and we had um, basically a, a, a function back in the past where I couldn't run this in consumption mode. So I had another function there that was there on an app service. And I just had an app service just for that. I was paying, I don't know how much it was, like like 40 bucks uh, uh, a month, just to execute that thing one time 
a week. The, ex the full execution is probably like, and I'm, I'm here exaggerating a lot, one minute. Let's just say one minute. I, I think it's not even like 20 seconds, but let's just say one minute. So every month I had four or five minutes of execution, but I was paying 40 bucks. Today, um, in consumption mode, pure serverless, uh, I don't even see the bill there. I, I think I don't even pay for that, to be totally honest um, with you, because it's just the, under the, the the free tier of of the um, of the execution. So like, I, I don't even see it in the bill. Uh, I just stop when it starts to be like stuff like four or five cents. I just stop uh, seeing the bill. Like, I don't have the time to check everything. Um, but this is this is what I can have. So less servers to manage more code to write so that I can focus on my business. Also, basically talking a little bit about the evolution of applications. So yeah, we started on-prem. We always started on-prem. We started to do stuff on-prem and look, on-prem was awesome. I really loved um, things that I could do with this. Um, but well, when it comes, okay, to the evolution of platform applications today, there are a lot of things um, that, I, that for me doesn't make sense today's world. Let's just see some of them, okay? Like for example, what media should I use to keep backups, okay? What sizes of servers should I buy? And I'm not going to read all of them, okay? Just some, which OS should I use? Should I care about that? Uh, do I need a UPS? Well, if you're doing on-prem, yeah, for sure. But uh, the thing is, how often should I patch my servers? Oh, let's do a patching policy here. Um, uh, basically, is my server in a secure location or can someone just enter in the room and do something with this? Uh, so, and, and look, uh, monitoring, I should monitor my application. How can I monitor my servers in terms of performance? Uh, should I provision more servers, less servers? Look, we can be here all day talking about this. There is really a lot of things to do. But with IaaS, with infrastructure as a service and the cloud, so basically what happened, and virtualization came here to the rescue. And a great thing about cloud evolution is that each phase leads to less waste. So infrastructure as a service, they leverage hardware in a way that I just stop worrying about hardware and I focus on the operating system and how your virtual machines are running. I can do better utilization of resources, okay? And it's way faster and easier to provision new instances. All right, so, and basically we address this, a lot of questions that we had on Prime that we don't have any anymore. And this is a good start, okay? So that I'm paving my way into the cloud. And I asked is great, but hey, we can do a little bit better. So I can go to pass. And then on pass, my questions are a little bit, what is the right size for the tiers that I need to choose? How can I increase the server utilization? How many servers do I need? How can I scale my application? So this is like the next evolution. I just host a runtime uh, and, and I stop worrying about hardware. I stop worrying about OSs. I stop worried about dependencies and I just focus on my project on my code and I don't longer um, in the business of constantly patching an OS look that doesn't basically add any value into my operation okay I'm not a patching company that, that's not what we do so why the hell I'm doing that so that doesn't have anything yeah we know we need to do it but it doesn't have any value pass will just simplify here the process okay even more um and, and provides a mature platform for code okay basically this is what we have and then pass is great and a lot of companies just stop here and they think oh we're so good we have a lot of stuff in the cloud but then what happens is that well i can even go to serverless okay and serverless is what is the platform for what I call cloud native applications. What is the question here? How do I architect my app? That's it, okay? You don't have to worry about anything. So serverless 
really today take us to the ultimate cloud native experience, okay? We just simply focus on the code. It doesn't mean there is no server because we know there's still some infrastructure in the back, but we are it's so abstracted that we don't care about, about there. And we focus on what's unique for our business so that we spend more time innovating our business, less time on basically doing questions about all the other phases that we talk about in the, in the first slide on, on, on this part, like, oh, what is the UPS that I'm going to use? What is this? What is that, et cetera. And look, I'm from that time and I remember spending um, like days reading spat sheets, okay, about hardware like UPSs because we had a company saying, oh, that's the best one for you guys. And we're like, I need to confirm this. And I was reading all the specs so that we could understand all of that. Uh, today, I just don't care about that. I just focus, okay, on the business and, and, and that's it. So this is like awesome what I can do. So what is serverless? Abstraction of servers, okay? Event-driven and instant scale because, well, the good thing on this is that I don't even need to worry about scaling. Like if you go for an app service, you know that, hey, yeah, I can do auto scaling in certain tiers. That's awesome. I, I, I really love that feature. But in here, I don't even worry about that, okay? I really don't worry uh, about that because, well, there's not the constant, the, con uh, the sorry, the, the concept of doing the scaling thing in here. And also the micro billing, okay? Because what you're going to pay is per executions. So let, let's just recap here. So with serverless, the server, including the hardware, the infrastructure, configuration of the operating system are all abstracted, okay? You don't even have to worry about a web service because it provides as part of the platform. You just don't. So serverless compute is totally managed, fully managed, okay? Some referred it as functions as a service OS. Um, there is zero administration tax. I just deploy my code. Then my cloud would just start to run. And I can just do like uh, basically an Azure function, just deploy my code and my code is running like in a matter of seconds. So all of this is seconds, okay? Creating a service, uh, putting my code there, boom, my code is running, okay? So this is the, the, the kind of stuff that I can. When we talk about scaling, this automatically scale within seconds in the back. There is no configurations about scaling. You don't configure anything about scaling, okay? Um, and you pay only for the time that your code is running. But now, there's even something even, even, even better on all of this, is that I can put serverless compute to react to events. And basically, I can have reactions in near real time to events and triggers. Triggers can be virtually any event, both inside or outside Azure. And uh, like, for example, I, I have uh, um, architect a, a solution for a company that uh, every time that someone does a change in, in a specific resource group that they have, they want to be notified. Okay, and they want to understand what it is, et cetera, so all of that. So with event grid, we did that, okay? We did a mix of event grid and logic and logic caps. So this is the kind of things that I can that I can do with this. So talking about uh about here about the micro billing, okay. So uh if you see over there, okay, what you have over there in terms of uh in terms of functions. So you can see there that this is really cheap, okay? So for example, the micro billing here, uh, this is just a screenshot of the pricing calculator. Um, uh, just check the cost of 1 million executions of, um, of basically within a month. Uh, and you see the cost there, okay, zero. So the first, okay, uh, 400,000 gigabytes of execution and 1,000, 1 million executions are free, okay? So only after this is that we start, okay, is that we start to pay. And of course, also the memory size over there, if you stick with that memory size. So only after this is that we start to pay. This is 
super awesome, okay? Because, well, for example, my example that I just have like a few executions, this, I, I'm, I'm not paying that, okay? But of course, look, if I go for five million executions here, uh, you see that you're paying four of them for a million and this is what you pay. So it's, it's, it's really, um, it's not very expensive. Of course, then when you put something really, really big on this, yeah, you might, you might end up uh, paying a, a good, a good chunk of money on this, but, um, but the per execution, let's just say it's really, really cheap. Okay. So now let's go for an example. Um, I have a server here. Okay. And, um, basically I need to track inventory and I track inventory by call, uh, uh, basically a SKU. Okay. So I, every time that I need, I just go SKU, SKU. Okay. That's just the two of them over there. They were happy customers. Okay. They were pretty fast, etc. But now pff, look, I just started to do a lot of them. And what happens is that, well, red flags everywhere. Okay. So my server just got overloaded uh, because it's a single server responding for all of this. So what happened is that, well, basically I'm, I'm totally overloaded in here. So what I need to do is I basically need to architect my solution in a different way um, so that I can automatically spin up new instances and then distribute it the load. So I will have to have a load balancer on top and then distributed this. If you go to infrastructure as a service, well, bad luck for you. You have to basically do everything yourself. You create a load balancer, you create virtual machines, you can do a scale set with this so that you can automate a little bit this, but now you, you have to configure it yourself and each server will not show up in seconds for sure. <laughs> Believe me, it will take a good minute okay for you to have another server and until there well probably your server is already uh overloaded um so you really need to design this in a way that that will never happen um but of course when you go for a serverless platform all of this is gone okay so all of this will be uh will be gone so talking about serverless platform components that we have on on azure and, and at least the main ones functions so functions we can execute code and those that code can respond to basically um uh, events that i specified they can be um azure events but also external uh, azure uh, external events to azure but we are going to see this in one demo then i can add logic caps here Logic Apps is totally a no-code experience. It's really just drag and drop things. I also have a demo on this. This is the last demo that I'm going to do. And I can build basically workflows with, uh, with this. So I, I design workflows and I orchestrate processes with this. And it's really easy. It's a really easy experience on, on how to do all of this. I can also do what? I can also do event grid. And event grid basically manages, okay, all the events that can trigger code or logic. And for example, and I'm 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 an Azure MVP, I love Azure, but I, I, there is a competition in AWS that they have literally more um, more basically more events over there than we have on the event grid okay so uh, be careful with that uh, because if, if you're working with aws and you're you're used to have that well um, they have a little bit this is a little bit they have more stuff over there but microsoft is doing a huge effort and they have been putting a lot of new things on the service and the the, the gap is decreasing very very well so I think probably in, in like a few good months is probably like uh, mid summer or something like that. We are probably going to have parity. I'm, I'm just saying what I'm guessing here. I don't have any information as an MVP on this to be totally honest with you. Um, and if I had, I couldn't tell you so, <laughs> um, but I don't have. Event grid 
functions and logic apps, okay, they are really the platform, okay, that um, that you that we have. And as you can see in here, then I can of course get this databases like Azure SQL databases, Cosmos DB, MySQL, Azure Storage. I can also do authentications with using an authorization during Azure AD. I, I can have IoT devices connecting to this. I can get stream analytics. I can get also basically all the part of the intelligence cloud that we have also on Azure. So all of this, I can connect this and I can then also connect this in the de development phases where I can integrate this with IDE because look, Logic Apps and Azure Functions, I can develop them in Visual Studio. Uh, so if you're a, a, a seasoned Azure, sorry, a, a, an experienced uh, Microsoft developer, hey, you're, you live basically on Visual Studio. And, and, and so, yeah, you can, you can use that. Um, you can also do integration with Azure DevOps. So Azure DevOps can be, and they have tools and they have steps for all of this to do continuous integration and continuous deployment using Azure pipelines with this. Local development, yeah, you can also develop this locally like Azure Functions, there is an Azure Function emulator and everything. You can monitor, you can do visual debugging um, and you can check all of this. So it's really easy, okay, for you to understand what is wrong in, um, in, in something that you're developing and understand what the problem, uh, what the problem is. So let's talk about Azure Functions, okay, and functions by numbers. And these numbers, to be totally honest with you, they are not totally up to date. Uh, they, these are basically always uh, increasing in, in, in a very fast pace. So active users, over 40,000 uh, users of Azure Functions. Uh, this means companies, okay? Over 275,000 apps. And the daily runs of this currently are in the order of almost 3 billion. So we have almost 3 billion daily runs of this. This is like massive. So introduction Azure functions. So the idea here is to have code uh, plus, okay, plus events. And with this, okay, we get Azure functions. Okay, so this is the big idea between uh, between Azure functions. Um, basically, uh, the function secret sauce that I have here is triggers and bindings. Um, this is like what is awesome on Azure functions, okay? Is that I can have triggers like blob storage. So I can have blob storage events being triggered and I can have something like, oh, there's a new blob in here. So yeah, okay. I can have that being um, being understand. So, and then it just fires, okay, an Azure function. Cosmos DB, Event Hub, HTTP triggers, um, queues, service bus, timers, or even a webhook. And then I can bind all of this with files, tables, Excel, OneDrive, email, a mobile app, notification services, and more and more and more. So let's just see some scenarios here. Let's imagine every 15 minutes, okay, I basically I fire up my function and my function finds and cleans invalid data, okay, on a specific Azure SQL database table, for example. Then the output will be the clean table. I can have another one that is that basically a file has been added to blob storage, okay? So someone added a file to blob storage. Because of that, I'm, I'm triggering that, oh, creation of a blob in, the, in that blob container, boom, the Azure function will run and they will transform the CSV, because that file is a CSV file, okay, into data rows and just publish this uh, to a data table. Then I can have a Power BI being fitted, okay, with a file that is just being dropped in a specific blob storage container. This is like, in the end, when you build this kinds of stuff, it's like super amazing the things that I can do. I still have two more. A photo taken, okay, and a webhook is being called the app where you take the photo, take the photo, uh, it's being called, 
boom, stores this in the blob storage right away. Okay, and then you can even have another function that produces okay all the scaled images like smaller uh, images in different formats, etc. Another one, I have a page that has been loaded. Uh, it calls a webhook. Then uh, the the function based on the session of the user goes to a database, checks what the user preferences are, and creates an ad. For, for that user, and then you show you shows the the ad okay on the on the page. So this is kind of stuff that you that you can do. Okay, so uh, and to be totally honest, there is so much more examples that we that we could that you that we could give in here. So with this, let me just open here my Azure portal. Okay, let me just select your account. There you go. So let me just open my Azure portal. There you go. Okay, let me just put this a little bit bigger so that everyone can see. I hope that everyone can see the, the screen well. So for me to basically create an Azure function, I just need to go here, create a resource. Let's just um, basically search by function. Uh, we should have a function app. As a resource, there you go. Let's create in a function app and yeah, create. Now I just need to provide a name for this and I'll just call it um, webinar demo. Usually this one is free. I'll use this all the time. Ooh, someone took this. Webinar demo two. Okay, I can stick with that. Uh, create a new resource group and let me just say demo webinar and that subscription is awesome i can choose because my functions can run both on windows or in linux okay then i can choose here if i want a consumption plan or an app service plan consumption plan for most cases it's the way to go um you can you can go for an app service plan if you have something that is really really always running and and then just do the map, which is the one that is going to be less expensive, but uh, the pure serverless one, it will be it will be this one. Let me just select here um, a region for me, West Europe, because I'm 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 very near that one. And runtime stack in here, you can choose if you want JavaScript, Java or PowerShell, PowerShell, it's in here as a preview only, okay? If you go to Linux, for example, in here, as you can see, okay, you also have Python under preview too, okay? So uh, you can select other stuff. I I'm sticking with this, windows.net, I'm, um, I'm good. And a storage account, yeah, create another one. And application insights, I'm not, going to want to have anything just for this to be faster in creating our our function app so let me just so now the function app is being created we can click here we can click under deployment so that we can keep up with the deployment so this should be usually it's quite um it's quite fast okay when this is doing this, let me just go here and just find functions that can put this in the favorites. Okay, there you go. So there you go, it's done. If I go to function apps here, I should have my function here oh no it's oh it's still running sorry i thought it had finished there you go it's done so there you go this is my this is my function app 
So webinar demo two. I now can create a new function. And when I create a new function, the first thing that I get here is requested is, hey, okay, yeah, great. But um, so what is the, the, the experience that you want? I can select, hey, I want Visual Studio, VS Code, any editor or in portal. So I can select in portal. So I can develop this in the, in the portal. In here, you can see I have the Webhook plus API. I have the timer. I have more templates. So finish and see the more templates. So this is the template trigger. You can have an HTTP trigger. You can have a timer trigger. This you're going to use a cron expression. So every X seconds, minutes, hours, days, whatever you prefer, it's going to execute. I can also have an Azure queue storage trigger. So every time that a new message arrives in a specific uh, um, queue storage, boom, okay, your, your Azure function will just start. Same thing for a service bus queue, a service bus topic. Uh, this was the one, the, 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 the Azure blob storage here was the one that we, that we were talking about in the example, in one of the samples. Um, and then we still have more like uh, Cosmos, etc. But also um, the ones that I want to see, for example, it's this one, SendGrid. Okay, SendGrid. So it's something that is external to Azure, but Azure did an integration with the guys from SendGrid, and basically, if you, a function sends a confirmation email when the new item is added to a particular queue, stuff like this, we can uh, we can also do this. So for me, I'm going to stick with a HTTP trigger, okay? I'm just going to give a name and look, for me, HTTP trigger now for this is, is like super cool name. I'm, I'm, I can stick with that name. And so there you go. So this is our, this is our function. Um, my function doesn't do that much in here, as you can see by, uh, by the code, it just locks, okay, this information like Django, C-sharp, HTTP trigger function processed a request, okay? Um, I can have a, a request name of a query of a, of a trigger, and I can just send back something, okay, um, saying that, oh, okay, yellow, something that you just sent on the request. Just to put this to run, okay, you just do this, okay, and then you can test it right away from here. So I can just say here, um, yellow, for example, uh, Azure serverless, okay? And um, if we basically uh, uh, run this, okay, need to click here, to run this, so there you go. And you can see here that the execution has been triggered, okay, cool. And the output that we got was this one. Uh, we can do the same thing um, based on, uh, like, for example, Postman to test this, etc. I'm not going to lose time with that, to be totally honest. This year is just enough. And of course, I can fire up a function using Visual Studio. I'm just going to show you here if you create a new project and if you go to cloud. So one of the projects that you have here is Azure Functions, okay? Keep your Visual Studio up to date uh, with all the, the, the cool stuff around the cloud because they are always changing things. So if I just press this one, so you see there, okay, yeah, the UI here is not the best to be totally honest, but I could just choose that one, okay, the HTTP trigger, and I will just get, okay, something, uh, something similar uh, to the one that I develop within the portal. The good approach here is that, of course, look, in here, okay, we, we have Visual Studio and I can have uh, basically then I can just put this in the Git repo, whatever, all those fancy things that we like, um, uh, that we always like to do within our, uh, within our apps, okay, that in the portal, it's just, it's good for testing stuff, good for showing something like here in the webinar, uh, but the real stuff is Visual Studio, okay. So let me just uh, where's my slides? Oh, there you go. Oh, just my slides just 
my PowerPoint just closed. I don't know what, what went wrong. Enterprise messaging with event grid. So modern computing, it's all about events. Okay, so um, in the past, managing events was not easy, let's just face it, okay? Some have, of them have built systems that involve multiple servers, load balancers, uh, clustered message queues, database backends, and then all of this just to ensure that I can manage the scale across the enterprise, okay? But dealing with your own event infrastructure, it, it was complex, okay? Uh, required a lot of investment and a lot of work. Um, I know projects that we had uh, basically dozens of servers just to anticipate a new customer, uh, just in case that they did, didn't have a good way of knowing uh, what workloads to expect and things like that. But basically, the good thing now is that I can manage today everything, all the events that I have on Azure, and even some external ones with just a single service. So let me just introduce you Azure Event Grid. Azure Event Grid is an Azure, um, it's an Azure uh, service that is, again, fully managed, that does event routing. That's it, okay? So it provides near real time event deliver at a huge scale. And when I tell you what near real time and scale mean, I can I can I will tell you with precise numbers. I'm not just going to tell you, oh, it's near real time, you know, it's a good marketing approach usually. And then oh, it's near real time in a matter of 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, it depends by person by person. But I'm going to tell you what numbers are. And we have a broad coverage within Azure. Like I said before, yeah could be better, to be honest, that part. This is the backbone, okay, of event-driven com com computing today. Benefits that we have, uh, focusing on the innovation and paper event. I don't need to designing solutions that are hugely big and make sure that I have enough servers, all of that. So I will pay by the events of the service and the scale any scale with our business. I also ensure reliability and performance. I don't need to worry about backups and things like that with this, okay? Because, well, basically the, the provider, in our case, Microsoft will take care of that, okay? And of course, with this, I, I can really unlock new scenarios for our applications and new ways of building applications and, and, and creating things within our uh, within our applications. This is like super interesting, the things that I can do with this. So I can manage all my events in just one place. But what about other stuff like, oh, there were not things like event hubs? Yeah, so event hubs um, uh, basically uh, um, are designed for point in time data, okay? They deal with big data streams. Uh, we can request playbacks of streams for a particular duration of time, and I can know the events that will be played back in that specific strict order. I can also have service bus. Um, so it's like really in the different spectrum here, and this is where I root critical items. I can set up complex workflows and transactions. Uh, so basically, in other words, if uh, three things have to happen, but one of them fails, I can roll back an entire transaction, stuff like this. Event grid, okay, fits here in the middle. So it's meant for business logic. What's unique is that event grid, they don't store message to be pulled, but operates as a push model. It pushes his messages out to handlers. It, doesn't it does guarantee the delivery, so if one of the handlers by any chance is temporarily down, it will pick up, okay, all the missed messages when that handler will come back on. So this is the kind of things that I can do. Some, some, some scenarios that I have. So basically I can have 
uh, serverless uh, applications. Um, so resources can generate events that trigger functions and logic apps. Another one, it will be operation automation, so ops automation. Uh, in here, for example, I create a resource group. I can send an event that triggers uh, setting up a standard security policy and then populate the resource group with a set of standard assets, for example. And finally, a common scenario is integration behind apps, both currently and legacy. So all the things that well, basically do all the, the kind of application integration uh, between applications. So I manage all the events in one place. I have publishers, I will have event handlers. So I can have like a publisher, like a blob storage. If something happens on a blob storage, right? I just fire up a function or a logic app or an Azure automation I can have a run book under Azure Automation, or I can just call a, a web book. So things like this. So basically the idea that you see in here is that I subscribe to predefined system events in Azure. So I will just say, well, what's the topic type? Oh, it's storage accounts. What is the event? What's the subscriber type? And then I can even use filtering on, on, on this, okay? Um, so this is the kind of stuff that I can do with uh, with this so talking about numbers i promised my numbers correct so what i can have in here is i can ensure reliability and performance on our apps sub-second end-to-end latency in the 99th percentile okay so sub-second uh so this is near real time i can have 10 million of events per second per region is that enough for you if it's not contact Microsoft, they will, uh, um, basically they will deal with it, okay? And highly reliable, so I can have a 24 hour retry window um, if, if it's not, okay, if it's not, 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 uh, not deployed. So this is what I have. So basically 99.99 availability, I can have 100 million subscriptions per region, and I can have basically a transparent regional failure. If something happens in a region, tr totally transparent, this goes to another uh, region and our stuff now it's executing in, in, the pair, in the pair region. So just to close up this, so some concepts here that we have, the events, what happened, the publishers, where it took place, topics, event subscriptions, so where publishers send the events, the subscription, how you receive, the event and then you have the handlers over there which is the app or the service that will react to the to the event sq events are our example that we started remember so if i build that one with this i can have being added okay another SKU. then i will have my azure function monitor that and then i can have another thing like just setting a price okay and then all of this will basically, if someone sets the price on the table and you're like, oh, okay. So if someone set the price, then your Azure function can also monitor, okay, can also monitor that. So if someone changes something, adding a skew or something, so there you go, okay, I can have my Azure function doing that. And my Azure function will scale with this. So if, you, if you're if you doing this 10 times uh, a minute, yeah, okay, it will scale to that. If you need to execute this 2,000 times a minute, it will and more and more and more and you don't need to worry about servers because um, probably some time of the day you're not doing almost anything in your system this will keep up that okay and you just don't pay uh when, when you're not doing anything when you're doing something something yeah okay of course hey, we, we need to pay for sure so what about logic apps how can i do integration um in a very easy way um, using logic apps. So powerful integration and workflow engine born in Azure. This is what logic apps is. Fast integration, um, concept applications, connect and orchestrate Azure functions. So all of this. So logic apps is basically an integration and workflow engine. This conceptually started with BizTalk, okay, as its roots on BizTalk, but, um, and it's built on nearly like almost 20 years of experience that Microsoft has with, Bill, with, with, with BizTalk. But Logic Apps is totally uh, uh, re-imaging of what BizTalk was, and, and it's totally 100% uh, 
cloud native on Azure. So this doesn't exist an on-prem version of this, so that you understand a little bit. So basically the idea of the goal of this is to enable integrations in days or even hours that used to take weeks and even months in, in, in other systems, okay? So we have, when we create something in here, and I'm going to do a demo with this, we have hundreds of connectors for integrations. And as you can see in here, and this screenshot is really focusing on Google stuff, because to, for you to understand that, hey, if you're using, for example, uh, the G Suite in your company instead of Office 365, you're not like out of this. Hey, yeah, you can you can still do stuff with this. It's here, it's available, and, and you can create files in Google Drive, in Google Sheets, etc. Of course, as you can imagine, you can do the same thing also on Office 365, okay? Then I can have a visual workflow designer, so I can do stuff like this. So I have like a recurrencing thing there, it's like every X minutes, for example, initialize three variables. I query some documents in a, in a, um, a Cosmos DB, okay? And then I have a condition over there, okay? Then I can have conditions and then if it's, is a tr if it's true, I'm going to do this. If it's false, well, I still need to develop here uh, what to do if it's, uh, if it's false. Logic apps, they can connect with other stuff, like for example, function service bus, the cognitive services on Azure, machine learning, Office 365, but even like external stuff like DocuSign. And you can tell me like, oh, what about on-prem? Because look, I have like a lot of stuff on-prem, Tiago. I have SAP, I have uh, IBM DB2, I have a SQL server. I even have a SharePoint server on-prem, okay? Yeah, so there is something called the on-premises data gateway that you can use so that you can reach all of those things, okay? So you can grab stuff from all of those things like like Siebel, Oracle, PeopleSoft, SAP. So all of this you can you can grab from, from there using a BizTalk server. Okay, this needs to have a BizTalk server behind the scenes. So let's do a demo, okay, uh, with, with Logic Apps. So I'm just going to my Azure portal. I'm just going to Logic Apps, okay, Logic App. I'll just say, yeah, let's create a Logic App. Let's call it an, an, a demo name on this. I can just say, yeah, use an existing one. I will just put here on my demo webinar and I just press create. So creating a logic app, as you can see, it's really a no brainer, okay? It's just filling up a form and it's just putting a name where you want to put it in each resource group and almost it's really just that, okay? So there you go. And it's really fast too to create, as you could see here. Uh, this is usually the speed of it. It was not just by chance that this was fast here. And because it's the first time that I'm dealing with this Logic App, I see here uh, basically an introduction to Logic Apps. So you can click here, this is YouTube video, okay? You can just watch the video. Um, and then you can just say here, start with a common trigger and you have some common triggers here. Like for example, when a message is received, okay, in a service, uh, buzz queue or when an HTTP request is received, uh, when a new tweet is posted, etc. So all, the, all those kinds of things. And if you go here, down here, you can even see templates, stuff that is already built for you. You, you just need to configure them and say, hey, connect to that account and to that account over there. So like, for example, in here, I have one that I really like, which is this one here. When a new file is created on a Dropbox, hey, copy to my OneDrive too. Okay, so uh, things like this that you can um, that you can have. But I will start with a blank one. I'm, I'm, I don't want any help. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find something uh, that I have on Twitter. Oh, Twitter, great. When a new tweet is posted, yeah, that sounds great. Let's sign into my Twitter account. Okay, so this is just going to request my password for my Twitter account. I think it's this one, yeah. I will allow the, the access to this and I'm just for the purpose here, I'm just going to say, yeah, one minute 
and search for filter parameters. And I'll just say, yeah, I want to find the hashtag, okay, logic apps, okay, are cool. Okay, so then the next step will be what? Will be basically I want to send an email to my uh, Outlook.com. So let me just search by Outlook, okay, and uh, create a contact. No, I want to basically send an email. So if we just basically scroll down in here, reply, oh, send an email, okay. Uh, Office 365, no. I just want to send an email with Outlook. Okay, so send an email, send an email. There you go, send an email using Outlook.com. So again, I will sign in to this. I need to sign into my Outlook.com account. And yeah, I'm going to use this one here. Yeah, I will allow the access to this. And basically in here, I can just say, okay, who I want okay uh to send the email okay i'll just say this account here a new tweet has been posted mission mark and then on the body of this okay let me just see here uh, i'll just say new okay uh tweet and i'll just say like text okay and then you can just go here and just search for original tweet text. Okay, and then you can even say here, okay, original tweet. Oh no, sorry, this is tweet text only here. Tweet text, and then in here, I can see user tweet ID. No original tweet user if it's this is not the one well whatever okay it really doesn't matter i can then save this ah no oh, oh sorry the search text was here not down there so uh what i wrote logic apps are cool let me just copy this i can now get i, I can save this i'm going to open my twitter feed <laughs> So this is now it's running, okay? And now, okay, I can just say test, okay? Logic apps are cool. Uh, this is test, okay, tweet. So if I just do this, okay, there we go. It has been put in here. We can keep up here. Let me just open my Outlook in the other screen. Um, and uh, if we just wait a second here. So there you go. It ran here, as you can see, successfully. And if we wait a second, there you go. See, so this is what I got. Okay, so I got this message. Okay, of course, look, my demo here is just I'm just doing this um, using uh, uh, basically Twitter to send something, etc. But of course, we could do much, much, much more with this. Of course, I could uh, basically do uh, um, an integration with Twitter. Uh, I will just read the tweet. I can send this to cognitive services to check the sentiment of my, of my tweet, if it's a positive or a negative tweet. And then depending on that, I can just track down that like in Salesforce, for example, in Dynamics, so something like this. So I'll just thank everyone, okay, for uh, for being here in today's webinar. Uh, so basically, my name is Tiago Costa, and this is Azure Serverless. Okay, you can contact me. Don't forget if you have questions, etc. Just ping me, and um, I'll just give remember everyone about the special offer for attendees on the webinar here today. Uh, so you can just contact Marta 
about a 10% discount for virtual mock classes and also 10% discount for Microsoft certification uh, role-based training. Uh, you have her email over there and you can just basically uh, reach her. She will be more than uh, happy to help uh, everyone. Uh, also, if you have questions, okay, just uh, just basically send your, your queries also to this email. Um, and so if you have questions on consulting and, and training, you have the corresponding um, emails in here. And I hope that you enjoyed today's webinar and I hope to see you back again soon.